it's been a few months since the last time I made a video on Windows 365, so uh, yeah, here we are again. Back when I made that video series on Windows 365, link is in the description of course, I don't think I ever mentioned Frontline once. Reason being that it just wasn't announced back then. But now it's not only announced, it's even GA. Windows 365 Frontline is basically the same service, but there are a few key differences from its brethren business and enterprise. So in this video, I will cover just what it is, how it works, how to set it up, a couple of important aspects to keep in mind, do a bit of demoing, cover use cases that it's meant for, use cases that it also applies to, some licensing and more. Let's get into it, shall we? All right, so at this point, I will assume that you are familiar with the basics of the Windows 365 service. But just so we're on the same page, Windows 365 provides cloud PCs that are running in a Microsoft managed tenant, either connected to a VNet of your own choosing or a Microsoft managed network. Payment is license based as opposed to consumption based. So if you really drill down to the essence of Windows 5, it's a virtual machine that you pay for by purchasing a license. That last part there, getting one virtual machine by purchasing one license is actually one of the key differences between Windows 365 Frontline and business or enterprise. More on that later on. So with Windows 365 Frontline, you get much of the same benefits that you also get with Windows 365 Business and Enterprise. You get personal cloud PCs managed with Intune available from just about any device out there when you have an internet connection, the security bits and so on and so on. However, Frontline is meant to be used by shift and part-time workers, not users that need access to their cloud PCs 24-7. For those users, it's better to just stick with business or enterprise. Windows 365 business uh, or enterprise have a one-to-one -one relationship between the number of licenses you purchase and the number of cloud PCs you get. But with Frontline, you get a one-to-three relationship, meaning that for every one license you purchase, you get three cloud PCs. Why three, you may ask? Well. If you divide the day into eight hour shifts, you get three of them. And since one of the focuses of Frontline is shift workers, well, you get the picture. The kicker is, of course, that you can only access one of those three cloud PCs at any given time. Let me show you just how this will play out and I'll explain further as we go along. So in my demo environment here, I have two browsers. Both of them are signed into the Windows 365 web portal. One side is the user one signed in and on the other side, I have user two signed in. Both of these users have Windows 365 frontline cloud PCs available. And as you can see, pretty much the only difference is that these have that little frontline tag on the cloud PCs themselves. And if I click open in browser uh, in the user one's uh, web browser here, I will you know, be connecting to my cloud PC as user one. And I'll hit uh, allow. And you see this message that disconnect when finished. And that is actually quite important once you're using frontline because once you disconnect from your cloud PC, it will actually be powered off. So any unsaved data will be lost since, you know, the cloud PC will be powering off. And that's a key difference between business uh, or enterprise and the frontline service, because with business or enterprise, your cloud PCs will be running 24 seven, but with frontline, your cloud PCs will only be running when someone is connected to them. So I'll hit OK on this message. And that should bring me back into my cloud PC. And I get the same message yet again. So they really want you to disconnect when you're finished. So I'll hit close on that. And as you might have noticed, once I connected as user one on user two's side here, the open in browser button was deactivated. And there's a message here stating that this cloud PC should be available soon. And that's simply because in my little lab environment, I only have that one frontline license. So meaning I can have one user connected to their cloud PC at any given time. 
So if I close the tab that is running my Cloud PC now, and I leave, then user two should be able to log in within a couple of minutes. Here you see the open in browser button is now active and I can hit that. And once that fires up, user one should be uh, not allowed to access their Cloud PC after all. So, and this process of your cloud PC is connecting. When you see that message, usually with business or enterprise, it's quite snappy once it, you know, in the process of connecting to your cloud PC. But with Frontline, since the cloud PCs are powered off when no one is connected to them, this is actually the process where the cloud PC is starting to boot up. So this does take a while longer than with business or enterprise. So that's one key thing to keep in mind. But eventually it will, you know, boot up and connect and user two will be able to use their cloud PC as well. So as you can see, the user experience isn't all that different from Windows 3 Survive Business or Enterprise to Frontline. In my little demo environment, I only have that one license. So keeping track of how many cloud PCs that are currently in use isn't all that hard. But say you have 300 shift workers you would then figure that you need 100 licenses, right? Well, consider if a couple of workers from shift one are either working a bit of overtime or they forgot to disconnect from the cloud PC. That would mean that not all workers in shift two can access their cloud PCs because as soon as there are 100 sessions, you will be maxed out. So consider purchasing a few more licenses that you will actually need in, in order to account for such scenarios. Besides, uh, purchasing a 110 frontline licenses is still a whole lot cheaper than purchasing 300 enterprise licenses. Thankfully, Microsoft has provided an pretty easy way to see just how many sessions are currently in use. I'll show you that when we get to the intent part of the demos. Just hang on a bit more for that. The, the setup process of Windows 365 Frontline is pretty much the same as for the enterprise flavor of Windows 365. You can choose to bring your own images or networks, or you can use the ones provided by Microsoft. If you already are using Windows 365 Enterprise with custom images and networks, then you can use the same setup for Frontline as well. No extra setup needed. The only difference in setup with Frontline is in the provisioning policy and how licenses are applied to users. Because with Enterprise, you assign licenses for Windows 365 directly to your users, either through group-based licenses or just simply assigning a license directly on their user object. As soon as your users have a license and is hit by a provisioning policy, their Cloud PC gets provisioned. With Frontline, you purchase the Frontline licenses, and as soon as a user is in the scope of a provisioning policy with Frontline as the licensing type, then their cloud PCs will be provisioned. And the license type is really the only difference when it comes to provisioning policies. But before I jump on into Intune and show you a bit more, let us briefly cover use cases for Windows 365 Frontline. I mentioned shift and part-time workers, and that is the obvious and main kind of use case for Frontline, just as it kind of is with Microsoft 365 Frontline. But consider also using Windows 365 Frontline for consultants, because they often don't work 24 seven, right? Or what about users that aren't using Windows 365 as their main PC? Another fun little use case is if you are a company that has workers worldwide, in that case, your workers work hours don't always overlap. So you could maybe get away with using frontline over enterprise or business, perhaps even saving you a few bucks. But let us jump back into my demo environment and I'll show you around in Intune and you can see how the admin perspective looks. So the normal way of configuring Windows 5 is through the provisioning Windows 5 here. So in my case, I have some provisioning policy, of, of course. So in my case, I have a Windows 365 Enterprise provisioning policy and I have a frontline provisioning policy. So if you take a look at the frontline provisioning policy, you can see that the license type here is set to frontline. And that's basically the only real difference between my enterprise provisioning policy and my, my frontline 
provisioning policy. And a neat little way to, you know, figure out who will be hit by this provisioning policy is if you scroll down to the bottom, you have the assignments. You can see the number of cloud PCs that I have available in my tenant, and I can see which users will have a cloud PC and which users will then not have a cloud PC. So as you can see, these users will not receive a cloud PC until more licenses are purchased. So I have three users with a cloud PC. The fourth one will not be getting a cloud PC in my case, since I only have that one license. So that's the setup part uh, of the admin experience. But I did mention that there is a simple way of seeing how many cloud PCs are in use at any given time. So to see that, we go on over to reports and you have this new cloud PC overview report here. And since I have frontline licenses in my tenant, you can see it connected frontline cloud PCs. And in my case, there is one connected cloud PC and I have one license, meaning that no further users can connect to their uh, cloud PCs. So in the case where you have 300 shift workers, you would typically want to have at least a couple of available uh, connections to frontline. So that brings us to my final thoughts on frontline. And if it hasn't already shined through, I like it. Especially if you consider frontline with the other new features that has come to Windows 365, like the boot feature and even switch. But as always, it's not a one size fits all kind of thing. Use frontline where it makes sense and don't force it through where another service could might be a better fit. I would especially keep in mind the slow login times that the frontline cloud PCs have. But what do you think? Give me your thoughts down in the comments. Also like and subscribe, of course. And if you haven't already, I would suggest you check out my video series on Windows 365. Thanks for watching and uh, cheers.